you know, we all have bad takes. Every single one of us. If you're lucky, your bad take will be kept to yourself. Maybe you'll uh, maybe mention it to friends and family. It will be in a quiet little forum where they can quickly address why you're wrong before you openly speak it out to the public. When The Phantom Menace came out, I proclaimed it was the greatest Star Wars movie of all. I was a kid at the time, so I was nothing but bad takes. I can look back at it now and realise how wrong I was, and question why my parents never punished me. Thankfully at the time the internet was quite young and my access was quite limited to it, so the damage that this opinion could have done was, was restrained, it was held, it was kept within my four walls. But now the internet has evolved, and an opinion can be sent around the world at the drop of a hat. Last month I was streaming. I was streaming and I was talking about mac and cheese and how I would combine it with barbecue sauce to bring out the optimal flavour. I was disgusted my chatters. They couldn't believe that I would do this to such a, a beloved lunch. But the cat was out of the bag and now I'm forever dubbed as a monster to mac and cheese. I still believe that mac and cheese is better with barbecue sauce, but it's clear was it was a bad take. So what does that have to do with anything? Nothing really, I just like talking about Star Wars and mac and cheese. But we're also talking about bad takes, which is the subject of today's discussion. No, we're not talking about Porky Man and her Cookie Gate fiasco. We're talking about Mike Rose with No More Rob Robots, a publishing studio in the UK, and his terrible, terrible take. So who are No More Robots? No More Robots are a publishing studio that has partnered up with Cheese Master Games with a solo dev by the name of Dan Beckerton. They've been working on a lovely title by the name of Spirit Tea. So Spirit Tea is a life sim RPG where the players are tasked with restoring a bathhouse for spirits. You see a lot of similarities to Studio Ghibli or Earthbound combined with Stardew Valley. And the reviews have been mostly positive. So what happened? Well, Mike Rose happened. With it all being around tw some tweets as it usually is. Mike was on Twitter and he was laying down some stats around Spirit Tea and its launch. And there wasn't anything out of the ordinary to be expected when going through his tweets. So Mike goes on to explain that he's singing the praises of the solo dev, the impressive console sales, Steam being an underperformer, which doesn't surprise me, it looks like the perfect game you'd play on the couch. He goes on to mention the impressive Game Pass downloads, but that's where the positivity ends when he goes to these free tweets. A hugely noticeable thing that happened during this launch was we got absolutely zero YouTube coverage at all. Go search Spirit Tea on YouTube and you'll see that there are just a couple of big videos. Nearly every YouTuber who got back to us wanted money to make a video. Now look, I get it. That's just how it works now. YouTubers want you to pay them to cover your games. Alright, sure. But I just don't want to do that. It feels weird, icky and disingenuous. And I just can't do it. So I guess our games won't get covered on YouTube anymore. Of course, the fact that we still managed a $1 million launch without any influencer support makes me think what we could have achieved if I paired some people. So maybe I'll be forced into it in the future, but God, I just really don't want to. It's so fucking ugh. <laughs> we then go on to thank everyone who's already purchased the game and is downloading it through Game Pass and hopes for the best of the success. There were a lot of comments through there that were congratulating Mike on his success, but the content creators were letting their disapproval know one in mass. And in fact, one of the content creators that I follow had streamed the scam and was commenting in there, letting them know that they were very hurt by Mike's comment here. So Mike's comment shows two problems. The first problem that it shows is Mike's out of touch and his old school mentality. Possibly from his time as a game journal, where you'd just be given a free copy of the game and you'd cover it and not expected to be paired directly by the studio themselves but times have changed and well streamers and content creators they've got bills to pay mike whether it's writing a review or doing a let's play or cutting together a, a let's play of it a content creator needs to be 100 percent sure that the content that they're covering is going to gel well with their audience Otherwise, they're not going to get the views, no revenue, and well, no revenue means no food on the table. So it's only naturally that some content creators would like to be paired. It just gives them that buffer zone, that little safety net. Smaller content creators like myself, we're willing to cover it for free, even without reaching out, because, well, we're still trying to find our voice. We're still trying to find our audience. So anything is up for grabs. 
A while back, I had a small indie team reach out to myself. They were the developers behind a, t a title by the name of Whispers of the West. They reached out when I was even smaller. While they provided me a free copy of the game to stream, I had such a pleasant experience with it that I went beyond the stream. I even did a review for the game. And in fact, I believe I'm one of the few content creators that's actually reviewed the game. And it was a pleasant experience for both sides. And in fact, uh, I'm sure that they would have rather that they had someone with hundreds of followers, maybe even thousands of followers, but they settled for me and it was a pleasant experience on both ends. But you know what they did? They didn't go on Twitter and complain. They didn't complain and swallow about how the small content creators were, were the only ones that were covering their game. And in fact, they sung their praises. Which leads to the second problem that I have with this comment. The small content creators. The small content creators that reached out and that covered this game. That even did it probably pro bono. How do they feel? Probably used. Worthless. Undervalued. They streamed to 20 people. Their video only got 500 views. Oh well. Ungrateful and entitled. That's how it comes off. With a tweet like that, you've scared off not only future content creators that wanted to cover the game, but even future customers that were interested in buying the game, seeing a tweet like this. And you read through the tweets, it's, it's all there. There's a bunch of content creators that have said that they're not going to be covering the game, and folks that were going to be purchasing the game have just outright moved on. So the real victim of Mike's bad take here? It'd be Dan. Dan from Cheese Master Games. He's the solo dev on this title. After being cooked for a few days online, Mike did come back and issue an apology. Now, whether it's just because he got caught with his hand in a cookie jar of a bad take, or whether he did see the error in his ways, he did apologize. And to be honest, it's a solid apology. Mike came out saying, basically, I fucked up, I'm really sorry, before apologizing to the content creators that he offended. Honestly, a slam dunk of an apology. It came out in decent time, Sure, it could have come out on the same day as the fiasco, but better late than never. Out of all the apologies I've seen recently, this is how you do an apology. Just apologize, claim fault, and move on. No dancing around the apology, no sorry but dot dot dot, or sorry that I offended you with my words, or sorry you feel offended. Honestly, if you ever find yourself in the need of doing an online apology, this is how you do it. Hands up. I'm sorry I fucked up, it's on me, move along. And by the looks of it, the responses seem to have forgiven him. Hopefully the damage has been minimized on this bad take and Mike just keeps to putting the stats out on how the game is progressing. But it's with the court of public opinion. Some content creators have accepted the apology and will be covering the game, some haven't, and some won't ever see this apology and the damage has been done. Personally speaking, I think Mike's apology is sound enough. He had a bad take, he was called out on it, he was quick to apologize and didn't make up any excuses for it. And in a show of good character, he's even left up the original tweet, which shows really strong character and backbone, that he's not trying to brush it under the dust under the desk. Though in saying this, I hope Spirit T does find success and Mike learns from this mistake and continues to grow. And with that, I thank you for your time. I've been Welshy Wands. Thank you so much for your time. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to give me a follow. We do game discussions, reviews, let's plays, a whole rigmarole of random things. Occasionally I will drop a bad take on there and I'll probably apologize with some interpretive dance or maybe just holding up one of my cats. Until next time gamers, have a great one. I still think barbecue sauce goes on everything.